transgender women they are so popular here because they are a lot of guys married no married straight looking for trans women It's about people who want to buy sex and they just devalue human life. And there are traffickers that are ready to sell this product to them. If you ask me when I assume that I am a transgender woman, I never assume that I were a boy. I really want to be a girl that can afford it. No dresses, no makeup. I used to go off um, to my friend's house and dress, you know, like a girl and everything. When I come back home, I was dressing like normal. You know, the world is not going to change unless we look at this as a human rights issue, not a girl's issue, not a men's issue, not a women's issue. This is about being human. I used to have a boyfriend and TJ, and he was like, traffic humans after like six months I knew that he was doing that. When I was walking in the streets when I get out from my job when I was walking to my house the police stopped me to ask me for something and take take me with them and abuse me forced me to have sex with them and throw, throw me away like a trash. I mean, I used to have sex since five years old. Nobody told me it was legal or illegal. I mean, my first time it was when I was five. It was people that you think, family, the priest, and your teacher. So who else? Nobody could, you can trust. I serve as district attorney for San Diego County. This is the second largest county in the state of California. We serve 3.3 million of our residents. We have everything from the border of Mexico, one of the busiest uh, borders there, there is, and uh, to the border of Riverside and everything in between. One of the things that I did earlier in my career is I saw that there was a gap in the way that we served special victims, and what I mean are victims that don't come and call police. Victims who stay in silence, they remain hidden. And those are victims of sex crimes and human trafficking. When I crossed the border and I'm being here in San Diego, I used to have a friend from TJ and she crossed the border. She had business here and I'm going to walk with her. Now when I started in TJ, I think I was, I was in love with him. But as soon as he started using more drugs, then he started selling me. I moved to North Park, kind of like a city underground. And that's why I start selling me. I mean, selling my body. That's when I met the first guy who offered me money to go with him. I was 15, 14 and a half. We've got almost 5,000 victims yearly just in San Diego in sex trafficking. And mind you, we encounter victims who are 15, 14, and 13 regularly. It is all sorts of men. Many of them are married. Many of them have children the age of the people that they're using. When we as a society put out there that prostitution is a profession instead of an oppression, that it's a choice instead of an enslavement. One day, I was walking in the street maybe about two o'clock in the morning. Somebody stopped and he asked me questions about how much I charge. And when I said how much I charge, he said, well, you are under arrest because I'm a police. But if you don't want to go to jail, you have to go with me. When I meet her and she take me in her house, uh, I have like uh, five minutes in that house and she told me, 
You have to take a shower, but the, the first customer, customer is coming. And I say, what? Customers? What? what are you talking about? I went to university. I finished my career. I studied tourism. It was kind of more difficult for me. They say, what am I doing with this guy? But it was like manipulating me. And I was, I think it was like afraid to, to do something to my family, not for me, for my family. So he took me to his apartment and I saw him every week, every two weeks, but he was protecting me to not get arrested. Plus, I had to give him money from whatever I make. When I realized what, is, what, is, what she really do, is because she want to take me to fly with her to San Francisco, to Washington, to many places to work in the prostitution. He was forcing me to do it, you know? Because he say, oh, we need it, we need to eat, we need to do, do, do this and that. After like a year, he take me to a street and it was too dangerous there. So we start traveling to the hotels and I get arrested. Traffickers really thrive in vulnerabilities. Whether the vulnerability for the victim comes from the fact their first contact was a sexual contact by an uncle who molested them at age five, or it's a vulnerability because they're in this country without documentation, and now they're trying to survive, and the trafficker knows they can't go to the police, they can't complain if they get abused, if they get beaten, if they get victimized. The people who are lining the pockets of the traffickers are the buyers. And the buyers like to pretend that they think this is consensual. Most of the clients, they used to take you to his house. Why? Because if they're gonna pay for something like this, I think they have money to afford a house. And they don't wanna be in a motel because, you know, they don't wanna see from other people what they're doing, illegal or not, especially when you a kid. If you saw, you saw the guys on the streets, you, do, you don't believe like they like transgender people. He told me, I like you because you have the best from both worlds. You have long hair, you have boobs, you have a uh, woman shape, and you have a penis. It's really easy to say, oh, this is just San Diego, or it's just because it's a border. But I sit on national and state commissions that deal with human trafficking. And we know that we have more in common in all our regions across the United States than we have not in common. So we know that our concentrated efforts of prevention, of educating our community, of engaging our community through a mass campaign, the Ugly Truth campaign, by doing heavy duty prosecutions using the Human Trafficking Task Force, and by protecting our victims, sheltering them, giving them trauma-informed care, that we're able to build that trust we're seeing our community respond. We're seeing the calls go up. We're seeing an engagement by every part of our community. La Maestra, he offered me plans to go to school. They helping me. It's a different way to spend time. And me people, they are in the same like me. They give you the support. They support like, like the humans we are, you know, like a transgender woman, because like I say to people, we are not a uh, woman. We are transgender women. You know, we know that evil usually thrives when people don't think of it as affecting them. And it's really important that we realize that it's closer than what we think and that it does affect us and that harm and injustice to anybody is really harm and injustice to our entire community. We are not sexual objects. We are more than this. That's what we want to show. And we're going to try to educate the people that we deserve some respect to. I think you have to be so proud of yourself and see and be 
like who you want to be. You don't have to depend for nobody, not even in a man or your family or your friends, nothing. You have to work yourself and be strong. When it's dark, it's always light to the end. And that's what I see. I'm gonna be 50, 50 next month. And I think I just start living this moment every day because if you don't love yourself, nobody love you. You have to love yourself first and then think about somebody else, especially in our community. Yeah.